Hey what is up guys? Dam Green requested to do a video on decentralized exchanges. I think it is very interesting and important topic in cryptocurrency space. So today we will compare decentralized to centralized exchanges. More specifically, we will look at the volume, usability, security, business models, regulations, and speed. Centralized exchanges With centralized exchanges, intermediaries such as companies act as a middleman in order to facilitate trading on their platforms. In exchange for providing this service, intermediaries collect trading fees. Essentially, centralized exchanges often act as the first place to go for newbies that are interested in trading cryptocurrency. Many users want to have an interface that connects them to both cryptocurrency trading and real economy, and centralized exchanges provide that. The operation of centralized exchange is relatively simple. If Bob wants to buy 5 bitcoins, one of two situations can occur. Bob can go to the order book and find an offer that he is willing to accept. Normally, a matching algorithm automates this process. And if Bob is willing to buy 5 bitcoins at the set asking price, then the Bob's buy order will automatically be matched with corresponding sell order that fulfills his requirement. Bob could also create his own buy order. This allows him to set the terms of the trade, specifying terms such as price and quantity. Decentralized Exchanges Unlike centralized exchanges, decentralized counterparties do not require intermediaries for their operation. It is peer-to-peer. -peer. Instead of matching buy orders and sell orders in the order book, a decentralized exchange operates by matching the people behind those buy and sell orders. For example, if Bob wants to purchase 5 bitcoins, he would be directly matched with Alice, who also wants to sell 5 bitcoins. From there, Bob and Alice can agree to the price and finalize their trades. A pre-programmed match and exchange software facilitates this entire process, so there is no need for any intermediary involvement. Volume and Liquidity Decentralized exchanges are simply not as well adapted as centralized counterparties. This can make trading on decentralized platforms an issue. Due to its smaller audience on decentralized exchanges, they have much lower trading volume than centralized ones. This means that finding an acceptable trade can be a difficult process. It also impacts liquidity. Lower trading volume makes it hard to buy and sell cryptocurrency and liquidate. But in order to liquidate cryptocurrency into cash, as of right now, a user will still have to rely on centralized counterparty that deals with cash. Usability Decentralized exchanges are relatively new to cryptocurrency space and they are not very simple to use. As adoption increases and technology improves, it will become more user-friendly. But as of right now, I would not recommend decentralized exchanges for beginners. You really have to know what you are doing when you want to use decentralized exchange. Secondly, decentralized exchanges also suffer from the longer trade times. Traders have to wait for cryptocurrency transactions to complete before a trade can be finalized. Therefore, traders that require fast trade times to capitalize on the market movement will find it difficult to do so on the centralized exchange. Also, decentralized exchanges currently do not offer advanced trading functionalities such as margin trading and stop losses making the case more difficult for traders to utilize the centralized platform. On contrast, centralized exchanges are very easy to use, especially for beginners. Market orders are instant, you do not have to wait until your order is filled. Therefore, you can take an advantage of volatile market and capitalize from those market moves. Security Unlike centralized counterparties, the centralized exchanges are not controlled by a single entity. There is no centralized server maintaining a list of customers' accounts, logins, balances, and so on. Only a decentralized number of nodes all participating in the network, which all use blockchain to process trades and information through the blockchain as transactions. 
Since there is not a single entity, there is no central point that controls users' funds. The centralized exchanges are trustless, which means that users always have control of their funds and remain in control of their private keys to those funds at all time. On the other hand, users who hold or trade funds on centralized exchanges do not control their private keys. The exchange does. If you recall, in 2014, a centralized exchange, Medgach, got hacked and 850,000 bitcoins, or in today's value, over $7 billion, disappeared. Or even more recent, in January 2018, CoinCheck cryptocurrency exchange was hacked and 500 million in digital tokens were vanished. Either way, if they indeed were hacked or if it was an exit scam strategy, customers' funds were gone. Business Model As I mentioned in the beginning, centralized exchanges rely on customers' fees. This is the main source of revenue. They charge relatively high fees to execute trades, especially if you use fiat to cryptocurrency trades. They also make money regardless if the market goes up or down. In the centralized exchange, absence of intermediary allows for non-existence or very small trading fees. It depends on the exchange and their protocol. Those exchanges that do charge small fees, those fees will be distributed to network service providers. Regulation Centralized exchanges are highly regulated. First, you have to be approved by the counterparty if you want to use their services. Centralized exchange requires know your customers or in short KYC documents to verify your identity. Exchanges such as Binance or Coinbase will request image of your ID or passport and proof of residence. As a user, it takes time and you will have to wait until you get approved to use the platform. On contrast, if you wish to remain anonymous and start right away, the centralized exchange could be the solution. Transactions per second Most of the centralized exchanges were built and being built on blockchain technology. And some of you may know that blockchain has some limitations. Even in new generation of blockchains that were built on advanced proof-of-stake protocol are still not powerful enough to process very large number of transactions per second. At best, it can process few thousands of transactions per second. On contrast, a centralized cryptocurrency exchange such as Binance is able to process 1.4 million of transactions per second and above 1.5 billion US dollars in daily volume. Conclusion The blockchain and cryptocurrency space have been built on philosophy of decentralization and the advantage that it brings. However, the same philosophy has not carried over to how majority of users are conducting trades within the space. The centralized exchanges continue to be overlooked for their centralized counterparties that do currently offer significantly better trading functionalities and services. As development of the centralized exchanges progresses, it may be likely that we see some shift in preference to more decentralized models. Keep in mind, this is not a zero-sum game, and I believe both will coexist in the future. So, this is the end. Let me know what do you guys think about centralized and decentralized exchanges. Which one will be more dominant in the future? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe for more animated videos about blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. Other than that, thank you for watching and see you next video.